So we begin by reading the instructions on canvas, stating which glass we should um, wash and dry out. Then we will put our materials inside the oven so they can dry out for two days. After retrieving the glassware from the oven, we set it up all together using the round bottom flask, this portion here, actual funnel, and this portion right here. We use clamps to hold it all in place. Now we will connect tubing to the top one so water can go inside. We will grab another tube starting from the top, and this is where water will be released into the drain. So in this round bottom flask, we actually have 0.53 of the magnesium, which we will place inside the beaker in order for this to dry for five minutes. So we're going to get five milliliters of anhydride we're going to place it inside this earl mile and inside this box. Yeah. Now we come back to the oven to retrieve yeah. our magnesium. We will pour our five milliliters of diethyl and our 22 millimoles of bromobenzene. Now we will grab our magnesium and attach it to our reflux. We will also grab our 5-methyl-diethyl, whatever this is, 5 milliliters, and place it through the reflux. So once we do the whole process, we have to let this sit and wait until this clouds up and bubbles a little bit. Then we will add another 6.5 milliliters through this portion of the reflux and we'll let it drip in. I mean this portion a little bit. This portion let it drip a little by a little. As we continue with the stirring and the breakdown of this, we have to wait till it becomes a bit more cloudy. As you can see, it has become cloudy. We have to keep on doing it for a bit more. Aside from the boiling, you can also feel how the reaction is becoming a bit more hotter. So the temperature is rising and you can smell a chemically type of smell. Oh, it's boiling now, I think. Now we will add 6.5 milliliters into the cylinder of anhydride. We will add the 6.5 milliliters into the reflux so we can maintain the um, boiling while maintaining this close as well. So we're placing 10 milliliters of diethyl once again inside the cylinder to then place inside the flask in which we will stop it with the um, wash glass so the vapors won't escape. Now we're going to place our um, solid within our solution carefully. Close it up with the watch glass, just so everything to stay in there. So after we take um, this off of the heating mantle, we'd hope for as much of the magnesium to dissolve as possible by the time that Professor Keeps allowed us to use.
So now we're going to place um, DIH2O into the funnel. Now we will continue by adding HCl into the funnel as well, which will then be dripped in. So we'll use a stirring rod to actually break down the solid and see if it helps to dissolve before we add more of the diet that we there. Since our solid hasn't fully dissolved, we're going to add some more diethyl ether in order for that to help it out. Do another squirt. We're going to add another another thing of diethyl ether just because the first two times that we tried it, it did not fully dissolve let's hope this one works out so at this point we're going to add more hcl acid to our mixture to see if that would help out with the liquefaction of this solid 20 drops Our solution inside a graduating cylinder to see how much we have collected. We'll add our mixture into our serpentory funnel to separate our two. Now we're going to add 15 milliliters of 5% uh, NaHCO3, also known as sodium bicarbonate, into our separatory funnel, in which we will then shake and open, shake and open. separate our organic layer from the sodium bicarbonate. We're going to add 15 
milliliters of um, saturated NaCO solution into our separatory funnel, which then we will mix, open, mix, open, mix, open. So now we're going to start separating our organic layer with, from the saturated NaCl solution. We're getting three grams of this solid. It doesn't be exact, so we're going to funnel it in. Magnesium sulfate. taking our organic layer and putting it into an Erlenmeyer flask. So now we're adding the solid magnesium sulfate to our organic layer. And then we're going to stir it with a stirring rod. And we used around 3.002 grams of the magnesium sulfate. Uh, so we'll be using 10 milliliters of hexanes. We'll measure 10 milliliters. Now we're gonna grab the 10 milliliters of hexanes that we grabbed. We'll dump it inside our, our solution. We'll go ahead and mix it. With our story. solution through the back infiltration to remove all liquid from our solids. So now we're going to be pouring 5 milliliters of the 2 to 1 hexane ethanol into our back infiltration. It would probably be better Hexane, ethanol to dissolve the solid completely. 
and then we'll keep it boiling. We're adding two more ml of the two to one hexane ethanol to make sure that all of our solid is dissolved. Now that our solution is no longer boiling and has no more solid, we're gonna go ahead and put it into an ice bath for at least 30 minutes. After getting our solution to room temperature, we're gonna put it in the ice bath to recrystallize more. Now we will vacuum filter our um, solids that are remaining due to the crystallization. But first, turn on your vacuum. Okay. We still have a lot of solid left behind. Solution. We're going to replace our solid inside a um, flask. So now we will grab a capillary tube and try to fill it up. Only like a very small, it's a really small amount. Oh, after like a few minutes of trying, you'll get three capillary tubes with this amount of um, solid inside. Preheat your melting point machine up to two and a half. And then we will now place our capillary tubes inside the machine. Make sure they're in within each little thingamajigger. And now we wait. Now we're getting our 18 molarity uh, sulfuric acid, which is the H2SO4, and we're only just going to get enough to completely submerge our solid in our small test tube. But this is a very corrosive acid, so we should be careful. So now we have a small test tube that we washed out with acetone to make sure there's no water and we're just going to put some of our solid into it to dissolve with the H2SO4, but it doesn't have to be a lot. So now we're going to start off with 1 ml of the H2SO4 to submerge our solid in. And as we see it immediately turns red. So now we have a pre-measured beaker with 10 milliliters of deionized water and we're going to add our solution with our solid and the H2SO4 into it. And as we can see, it immediately kind of condensates and turns into a white cloudy substance. Um, now we're going to be taking our solid into a test tube that we cleanse with acetone to dissolve it in more acetone so that we can get the IR reading. solid dissolved in acetone. So first we're taking our two salt plates and putting it into here. So first what we did is we took our two salt plates and put them into the machine to blank them. Now we're gonna go to the program and select the background setting. After switching the program to the background setting we're gonna click start.
So after we use a machine to blank this, we're gonna put our salt plates, touching them on only the corners, onto a tissue paper. So now I'm gonna take one of our salt plates and a uh, pasture's pipette with our solid solution and acetone and gonna gloss it over the salt plate. I'm gonna shake it around a little bit. After we wash this, what do we need? Oh. So now we're gonna switch our program to sample setting and then we're gonna click start to read our sample.